Prince Friedrich Wilhelm Albert Victor was born on the 27th of January 1859. As King of Prussia and Emperor of Germany from 1888 until the end of the First World War in 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm was one of the most influential individuals in early 20th century European politics. More than any other individual, historians have long debated the central importance the Kaiser had on the outbreak of the Great War, and especially of his egotistic personality and highly strong militaristic tendencies. According to this narrative, his troubled childhood, born with a paralysed and withered arm, and his corresponding deep sense of low self-esteem, were crucial to his later need to prove himself the Prussian strongman, the supreme warlord of Europe. This, then, is that story. The withered arm and the secret, exhausting, and downright bizarre treatments the young Wilhelm had to endure. Awkward from the get-go, the young Wilhelm was a breech birth, presenting bottom instead of head first, making his first-time teenage mother's delivery all the more dangerous and painful. A devoted husband, Prince Friedrich, dutifully placed his own fingers inside his wife's mouth, so she could have something to bite down on. When that proved insufficient, chloroform was required to ease the suffering. Although in keeping with the strict manners of the time, this did at least give her the opportunity to beg forgiveness of all those present for her screaming and impatience. In the end, after ten hours of little success, and fearing the child may be close to death, the attending obstetrician reached in and, with, quote, considerable force, pulled the left arm down over the head, managed to turn the infant free and deliver him into the world. What is now known is that whilst no doubt saving the boy's life, it was this action of pulling down the left arm that most likely damaged the nerves connecting the spinal cord with the shoulder. This caused the paralysis, improper growth, and claw-like hand that was to have such a dramatic impact on Wilhelm's life, and, arguably, alter the fate of Europe. By day three, they noticed something was wrong. Leading experts were called, examinations made, opinions offered. It began with applying cold compresses to the arm, some massages, and baths in brine. Later, this was switched to seawater. At six months, they started killing hares and wrapping the still warm and bleeding carcasses around the arm twice a week, for 30 minutes, in the hopes that the animal's vitality and warmth might be transferred to the boy's lifeless arm. It didn't work, but they continued the practice for several years regardless. Of course, tying down the healthy right arm to force Wilhelm to use his left was tried. Helpfully, just as the poor boy was learning to walk, he fell over constantly. His mother, fretfully writing to England's Queen Victoria that Wilhelm was starting to get very angry and violent at the practice. When, at twenty months, someone noticed his left hand slapped down on a toy drum, they promptly strapped a drumstick to his hand and fixed the drum around his waist in the hopes that this might encourage some movement. His father, Friedrich III, even suggested a Berlin man who could use magnets to heal the arm. He heard of the man's powers via a woman sleepwalker. She learned of the miracle cure via a trance. By 12 months, Mr. Let's Kill Animals and Wrap Them Around the Arm suggests, you guessed it, electric shock treatment. Low voltages at first, so the infant barely noticed, later increasing and then using a constant current. Five minutes a day during winter. It would have been ten, but it was noticed that the prince became nervous and tense during the treatment. This too continued for years throughout his childhood. 
a head-stretching machine at four years old to correct his lopsided stance, an arm-stretching machine to lengthen it, several times a day, worn for years. Throughout his life, Wilhelm mistakenly blamed an English doctor for the trauma he had endured at birth, which, he said, was the result of his English mother not having Germans about her. His relationship with his mother was indeed strained in later life, and did bleed into a significant anti-British hatred, something which many, including Sigmund Freud, made much of in analysing the Kaiser's disastrous decisions and behaviour in the run-up to the First World War. Following the war, he was forced to abdicate and fled into exile to the Netherlands. He died in 1941. His arm never did heal. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and comment below.